Today I will advise Adam on his posture. He sent me two pictures, one of him sitting at work or at home and another one of him standing and he accepted that I publicly comment on this picture to inspire you guys. Remember, this offer is valid for anyone. You send me the pics, you get the video. Here is the first picture and you see we're always going to proceed in the same way. I will give you a general impression of the posture and then a regional analysis starting in the feet when I can see them and moving upwards. The general impression Adam here of your um, posture is that you're a bit like this. Yeah, it's, it's not a lot but it's a bit. Now let's start um, the analysis. It, it seems that Adam has his feet well on the ground so that's all good. You see that he has stuck to the 90 degree rule in terms of knee angle but this rule is actually so-so in the sense that you don't need a sharp 90 degrees. You need your feet firmly on the ground and your hip joint comfortable i.e. at least 90 degrees. In this case my advice to Adam would be to raise his chair a tiny little bit to reopen the hip angle. Why this advice? Well because I said we observe that a bit and that slouching will be aggravated if the hip joint is, is closed. So as I see this a bit I say well look Adam keep your feet firmly on the ground but just raise the chair by one or two centimeters and then it seems that we have a lumbar support made of foam. The only thing is that, well, the chair seems to have a proper lumbar support. So, you know, it, I can't see on the picture, it could be that you have pressure points or something due to the backrest and that is not comfortable. Therefore, the block of foam, I don't have the information, but you should not need the block of foam if uh, there's no pressure point. If you think that for XYZ reason you want to keep the, the foam block, well I think you should put it slightly lower. We don't want the, 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 the lumbar support in the lumbar area because you see what rotates first is the pelvis. So what we want to support is the pelvis. And for that reason you want the, the foam block to support here the two bony protrusions that you feel behind your, your pelvis whereas the current foam is around here. And then I think that there's a vicious cycle happening in your upper body. As the mid-back is slightly round we see that your head is a bit forward and my impression is that you need the pressure on your armrest to not collapse further in your upper body. And you see all this in my opinion originates from the fact that your mid-back is slightly backwards. This is not something that we want. We sh you should try and keep your mid-back slightly more forward. There's a video that I have published on this in which I explain the test of the, well, of the Pisa Tower say. Once you're on your sitting bones, if you put your upper body backwards, you feel that your abs will tense up. Yeah? That's because you're out of balance. And when you come back forward, at some point, your muscles relax. Well, this is wh where you want to be. So my advice is do this test and then shift yourself at the back of your chair or against the foam block if you decided to keep it. And you'll see that your torso is slightly more forward than it is today. This will in turn activate the lats, the latissimus dorsi here, which act as an internal armrest. And you see, when the lats are present, well, I don't need my armrest. And therefore, I will not have them supporting my, arm, my forearms like Adam has them, but I will have them just below so that they're here when I need them, but they are not disturbing my mobility when I work. Because this is what we see right now on, um, on Adam's picture. We see that there's serious pressure basically around 10 centimeters uh, on the forearm and this leads to, um, to the forearm that's not really free to move and as a result the wrist will be moving a lot which is kind of problematic here because the wrist is supported by the wrist rest so somehow everything seems locked, seems locked on the right arm. 
Now, for the rest, I don't see the screen either, so I cannot judge on its height. But there are two things that make me think that it's a little too high. One is the angle of the book. You see, if the book is that vertical, which is comfortable to read, huh? but the thing is, to look at the screen, you will have to put it above the upper corner of the book and that might be too high and the other reason why i think it's too high is if you look carefully at the eyes of adam you see them aiming upwards and this line of sight here will create a slight neck extension which could result in this so to cut a long story short the advice here is raise the chair a tiny bit and replace the lumbar support a bit lower so that it supports the pelvis and work on your torso position so that the torso is slightly more forward. This will activate the lats and in turn you can free your arms. Also make sure that the, um, the screen isn't too high. You can maybe flatten out the bit, uh, the, the back. One exercise that is useful when you have the same posture as Adam is what I call the sitting prayer exercise. You see, you put your forearms on your knees there and we'll make the lower back flat. We'll keep the chin inwards. Yeah, don't pull it back. Yeah, you just keep it where it should be. And then we press the mid back slightly forward. You don't see any movement normally but you should feel tension in the mid back and you can increase this tension by exerting pressure of your forearms against your thighs this is an, a mid back reinforcement exercise that will work both on the spine extensors and on the lower trapezius latissimus dorsi so this is a very useful exercise for people who sit all day long second picture now well what we see i'm going to try to 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 do the same is kind of that yeah come on man you'll never be able to sustain it like this you're trying to yeah flatten every curve and this is the typical posture of someone who has learned pull your chest out and ch uh, tuck your chin back yeah that's th th that creates a lot of strain on on your body i will show you an exercise that will help you feel what is an okay posture and you will see that it's characterized by the fact that the pelvis is slightly more backwards than it is on your picture and therefore the torso is slightly forward slightly being around two degrees or so okay so let's go against the wall and you put your belt against the wall in such a way that your heels are not against the wall and your shoulder blades are not against the wall and now what you try to do is bring your shoulders back into the wall and you see that your back hollows so this is uncomfortable now let's train what we should do with the pelvis you put the fat part of your butt against the wall this hollows your back and then you bring your belts more in direction of the wall okay and from there what you're gonna do is just use your ankles to tilt your body one block yeah so you have your feet here and your body here and your body goes duk, yeah duk, like this and you bring your uh, weight in such a way that your weight is centered under the arch of the feet and you see the resulting posture is slightly more monkeyish than you are monkey is relaxed you're tense so that's what you should do to uh, improve your posture this is super shortened version of how to stand in my online posture program there are uh, if i remember well three or four weeks dedicated to learning how to stand so definitely if this is something that well you adam or you anyone wants to um, to learn my advice is get the the online posture program the medium one or the one with the coaching uh, so the one that lasts 10 weeks first three weeks how to sit then how to stand then how to bend down and how to lift i hope this was useful not only to adam but to everyone and again feel free to send me your pictures allow me in written form to uh, share them on the web and i'll be happy to comment for helping you improve your posture